Yes, hello, good evening everyone, good evening world. Once again, welcome to Kingdom Talk. Today, I am so honored to have Dr. Rick Kindle in this program, Kingdom Talk, fresh from Florida. Good uh, morning to you, Doc. <laughs> good morning. Great to be with you, Coach Ario. Yes, thank you, Doc, for the honor to have you in this program. It is always a pleasure for us to see you in this program, Kingdom Talk. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Same here. <laughs> and thank you for serving your gift, not only to this program, but also to the world. You know, I want to say something to you, too. Um, I, I want to thank you and Coach Prissy for, you know, presenting excellence with Kingdom Talk. And most people may not know this, mm -hmm. but I think you do this with your other speakers as well. But you provide the theme. For us, uh, you you suggest a theme for us, mm -hmm. and I think uh, if people realized that that takes the Holy Spirit, that takes yes. kingdom guidance mm -hmm. to know what subjects to give to your speakers, because I've noticed even in the titles of the subjects that you give us, they are very uh, deep. <laughs> they are very, they are very well. I, in fact, I thought. Man, it would be great just to hear you and Coach Prissy mm -hmm. uh, talk on a subject sometime because I think you all are filled with powerful wisdom. Thank you, Duke, for the encouragement. Actually, every time I think about the team, I, uh, I'm i always asking God that, Lord, what, what do you want us to, uh, the, the, what do you want, uh, the kind of message that you want us to bring out, not only into our place, but into all the world, especially yeah. in the season that we have today. Yeah, you do an <laughs> excellent job and you're a great representation of the king. Amen. Always to the king. <laughs> Amen. 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 So, Doc, I, I know that you're excited to share the, pro, uh, the, the message that God has put into your heart. Just like what I'm always saying, this is your show. This is your program. Dominate all the spirit of influence. Well, amen. And and uh, I love dialogue, too. So if you have something to interject, please wave me down because, yes. <laughs> because uh, I, I love that interaction. I guess that's mentoring. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, I, I want to start with the topic that you gave uh, concerning leadership. Mm -hmm. um, you know, really the kingdom concept of, of true leadership. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily what... Uh, you know, uh, Western society mm -hmm. has made it out to be. Uh, in Western society, its leadership is more about uh, domination mm -hmm. of people or, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's not kingdom. Yes. Uh, the kingdom concept of leadership is serving, uh, serving people. Mm -hmm. So Matthew chapter 20, I'll begin there. Matthew chapter 20, verses 25. Uh, through 28. I want to read all of this because I so, think it's so, you, so... Excuse me, Doc. So are you saying that God's idea of leadership is about service? It's about yes. serving people to people. Yeah. He that's greatest among you, let him be your servant. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that we're doormats. It doesn't mean we let people walk all over us, but it means that we are serving our gift. Amen. And that's really what Jesus was saying here in Matthew. Uh, Jesus called the people unto him and said, you know that the princes of the Gentiles, or in other words, world systems, mm -hmm. exercise dominion over them. Mm -hmm. And they that are great exercise authority upon them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it shall not be so among you. Mm -hmm. He's getting ready to give them a kingdom principle. Mm -hmm. But whosoever shall be great among you, let him be your minister. Yes. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto but to minister and to give his life a ransom wow. for many. And wow. that really kind of starts us off, Coach Ariel, don't you think? I mean, mm -hmm. That's you powerful. can't get much plainer than that. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, so we have to re-examine our concept of leadership. Uh, we, because you, you know, Doc, uh, while you are reading that verse in the Bible, yes. in the Constitution, I, I, I believe that the Lord really speak it into my heart that, that he says to me that the reason why God become more greater because although he was great, he chose to serve his gift to his people. Yes, yes, and to allow them 
to discover theirs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To me, you know, I think we know that a dictator is not a leader. Mm. <laughs> yes. A dictator controls and manipulates and forces people to follow them mm -hmm. in bondage. Mm -hmm. But a true leader inspires, mm -hmm. transforms, mm -hmm. guides, mm -hmm. equips, mm -hmm. and activates people to discover their purpose. Can you say that word again, Doc? <laughs> That's powerful. Yeah. A true leader inspires, mm -hmm. transforms, mm -hmm. guides, mm -hmm equips, and activates people to discover their own purpose. Wow. <laughs> you know, I think uh, religion, and I thank God we've been delivered from religion, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think religion takes on the leadership of dictatorship mm -hmm. because it wants to regulate um, without transformation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But true leadership has to understand that it's not about uh, regulating people. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, helping them to rediscover mm -hmm. who God made them to be. And then allowing a true leader will always celebrate when you surpass them. Yes. When you excel beyond them. Mm -hmm. they, will they will applaud. Mm -hmm. But someone who's not a true leader will be intimidated. Mm -hmm. They will say, wait a minute, you know, I've got to keep you back here behind me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's not a true leader. Mm -hmm. But the word leader, it's only used, I think, like six times in the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, and only a couple of times or once in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. But here's what leader really means with this interchangeable definition. Mm -hmm. Officer, governor, commander, chief, captain, and teacher. Mm -hmm. So a leader is not one who forces people under a bondage of their dictatorship. That's not a leader. Mm -hmm. But a true leader leads by teaching. Yes. And you know, Coach uh, Ariel, I, I have often felt that a true leader doesn't seek followers. Mm-hmm. If, a, if, a, if someone who believes they are a leader, if they feel like they have to seek followers and get people to follow them, mm -hmm. they're not truly understanding leadership. Yes. But a true leader attracts leaders in training who follow. <laughs> yes. Amen. So, you know, we're not looking for just followers like little sheepies that are going to keep, you know, being dependent on us. But we're, we're looking for developing leaders who will excel us. Mm -hmm. This is so important. Mm -hmm. And so this is, this is where I want to bring this to uh, in this first part. And please let me know if you've got something mm -hmm. because I see it on okay, your face. Okay, look, before, before you continue. There you go. <laughs> what we are discussing right now about this concept of leadership, this apply not only in the uh, church concept of leadership, because yes. what you are discussing, though, I believe this kind of concept of leadership, it needs to be applied not only in the church, but also in yeah. government, in business, Absolutely. and all the sphere of influence. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. Because we know that there are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers mm -hmm. that are set in the church. Mm -hmm. We know that. And the church mm -hmm. being the ecclesia or the called out ones. Mm -hmm. So that they're there to train people, equip people. We know that there is a very definite set of leaders that are called in those fivefold mm -hmm. in the church. Mm -hmm. But it's to develop the leaders to be sent out. So there are apostles in the marketplace. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Apostles are those that are sent to set order. They're out to, uh, you could call them uh, visionary entrepreneurs. They mm -hmm. are innovators. Mm -hmm. If we don't send them out to be apostles and pastors and evangelists and pastors, not that they're going to be saying, hey there, I'm pastor so-and-so here in the marketplace. Yes. No, it just means they take on that gifting mm -hmm. to begin to infiltrate like yeast and dough mm -hmm. and innovate into all the spheres of the world. Mm -hmm. So we as leaders can't keep all the fivefold just in the church, mm -hmm. but we're supposed to equip them into discovering their 
uh, purpose to mm-hmm. go out and bring that fivefold into the world. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you said that mm-hmm. because uh, the church is not a club. <laughs> Amen. You know, it, it's not supposed to stay inside the walls. It's Amen. supposed to send the people out mm-hmm. and, and not so that they can talk about their leader. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they can talk about God. Yes. And they represent the kingdom. Mm-hmm. So visionary leaders are needed. And I'm going to say it this way. There's two words, visionary and leader. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The problem, Coach Ariel, is we have had in the past a lot of visionary leaders that were not leading. Mm -hmm. They were just telling people about their vision. Mm -hmm. But a leader transitions people into understanding how to manifest that vision. Mm -hmm. So we can't go and people say, catch my vision, catch my vision. You're going to catch my vision. Mm -hmm. Where in the Bible does it say they have to catch your vision? There are no secondhand visions. Yes. But God has put the visionary leader there so that they can catch their vision. Mm -hmm. Because we're all originals, as Dr. Monroe used to say. Mm -hmm. And... A true leader is going to inspire and and uh, transform people by helping them to discover their vision mm-hmm. and how it fits in the corporate vision. Mm-hmm. So I'm not catching anybody else's vision. I need to discover the vision God's given me and how mm-hmm. I can put that in corporate, uh, you know, harmony with a leader. Mm-hmm. So. We have a lot of visionaries out there, and they're always telling us, we're going to build a church. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Mm -hmm. And the people are like, "Um, okay, so I guess we just follow you doing that. But the body is not an active head and a limp body. Mm -hmm. But the body has to be activated and lifting up the head. So uh, (laughs) we need to have visionary leaders, meaning those who know how to transition people, not slam dunk them, but Mm -hmm. transition people into discovering their purpose and vision and how it fits a corporate vision. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So so are you saying that the vision that God has been given to us, it is designed so that we can uh, use that vision that we have to help other people? Yeah, to help them uh, not catch what God's called you to do, Mm-hmm. but to help them catch what God's called them to do. Mm-hmm. That's right. So that now it's it's an original vision in them. It's it's mm-hmm. it's something now that they will begin to say, wait a minute, I see how I fit mm-hmm. in the leader's vision. I'm not mm-hmm. catching his vision. I'm seeing how I fit uh, yes. with the vision God's given me. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, so that the originality and the uni- uniqueness of that person can be preserved. Yes by catching his his original vision that, that that God has given to that person. Yeah. You know, I, I know we've heard it said a lot, and especially in the church world as far as the religious part of it, that, uh, and it's true, there's a biblical, uh, you know, definition that we are sheep. Mm-hmm. I know we are sheep, mm-hmm. but we're not supposed to stay sheep. <laughs> Even. You know, so I hear, you know, in a lot of this, I hear uh, in religious circles, you know, you all in the church are my little sheep, you mm-hmm. know, and, and we need, you need to be dependent on the pastor and you need mm-hmm. to. And that's we, we are always the sheep of his pasture. Mm-hmm. We always need dependency on God. Mm-hmm. My puppy is, is crying. <laughs> it's okay. Um, we, we need dependency on God, but we don't need to be dependent on a leader. Mm-hmm. We need to know how to, through the leader, be dependent on God. So mm-hmm. we now uh, have moved from sheep to servants to sons, and God then calls us saints. Mm-hmm. So now I have to grow up. I need to say, you know what, I'm not a dependent little sheep on my leader anymore. Mm-hmm. But a true leader, uh, I like the way Dr. Monroe used to say it, he makes himself <laughs> or herself unnecessary Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because not not totally unnecessary but i mean that we're not building a dependency on ourselves yes and so 
we need visionary leaders that know how to transition people from sheep to servants to sons to saints mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then treat them that way and not talk down to them all the time, mm -hmm. you know, but to treat them like the kingdom citizens that God's called them to be. You, you know, Doc, that, that's the reason why I really like the Lord Jesus Christ, our King, because He wants us to have access to His access, His Father Himself. Yes. Yeah. In fact, you know, uh, I've had people, and I'm sure you've had people, uh, and I'm not trying to sound like I'm all that, but I'm saying, <laughs> I've had people say to me, you know, Dr. Rick, you know, I, I really want to, I want to be like you. And first of all, I'm surprised. I don't think they want to be like me. <laughs> but what they're really saying is they see something about God mm -hmm. in me. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm God, but they see something that they identify about themselves in me. Mm -hmm. Thank God that's giving him glory, not me. Mm -hmm. So when they see something about themselves that is God in me, then it's not going to become, they're not going to become a clone of me. Mm -hmm. I don't need duplicates of me. Believe me, the world does not need a duplicate of Dr. Ray. Yes, that's right. But, but they begin to discover who they are mm -hmm. because they saw something about God in me. Mm -hmm. So when someone's attracted to a leader, it's not because the leader says, well, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm really special. It's not about you. It's about what they see about God in you mm -hmm. that speaks to who they are becoming. Mm -hmm. Isn't that good? Yes, because, you know, we're not special because everybody in the kingdom of God are special to God. That's it. <laughs> and you're an original. Yes, that's right. You know, we, you know, all of us, I think, at some point imitate a leader. Mm -hmm. uh, for a while, back when I was beginning in ministry, I probably imitated a lot of leaders because I didn't know who I was. <laughs> I mean, you know, I followed a lot of leaders. You know, I remember... Uh, when I was really a lot younger, I, I followed Oral Roberts mm -hmm. and I wanted to pray for the sick like he did, you know, <laughs> and, and I had to find out, you know, it's not about being like him. Mm -hmm. It's about discovering who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. My doggy's all upset. <laughs> I have a puppy dog here in my office, mm -hmm. but, but I had to find out who I am. And that's the, that's the goal of a leader is to help people discover their original design. Mm -hmm. what God put in them to be. Mm -hmm. So God has given the leader power, mm -hmm. but it doesn't start with power. It starts with authority. Mm -hmm. If you have to constantly tell someone that you have authority, you haven't discovered it yet. Mm -hmm. Because a true person of authority never has to say they have authority. Amen. They simply operate in it. Because authority, and I, I would love some people to write this down, authority has to have authorization. <laughs> and the authorization has to come from the author. Yes. So God is the author, not us. And if the author, God, gives authorization, then we have authority that will result in power. Mm. But that power is not over people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that right. power is to empower mm -hmm. people. And that's the purpose of power, <laughs> to empower that's people's it. lives. To empower them. Mm -hmm. So the four main characteristics, I, I, I just shared this, um, of a true leader has to be character, mm -hmm. stature, mm -hmm. then office. Mm -hmm. Office doesn't come first. But character comes first. Yes. Stature, office, and then assignment. Mm -hmm. Carrying out the assignment. Mm -hmm. Because God is more interested in character than he is performance. Mm -hmm. And a true leader can't skip uh, character. Mm -hmm. Actually, Doc, when I heard about uh, office and assignment, uh, there is only one thing that comes into my mind. It is a responsibility. <laughs> yeah, responsibility. I, I love uh, what I heard one time. Responsibility is our response to his ability. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> responsibility is our response to his ability. ability. 
It's not our ability. It's our, it's our response to his ability inside of us. Mm -hmm. So here's the important thing, Coach Ariel. Titles don't produce power. Amen. Titles don't produce power. And if used, I'm misused, it will actually reveal the lack of authority. Mm -hmm. If you just claim a title and you've not been authorized by the author, if you just claim a title and think that title produces your power, it will actually expose the power you don't have. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> so titles, all titles do mm -hmm. is describe function. The function of a position. It doesn't make you more spiritual. It doesn't give you more power. It just simply describes the function mm -hmm. that you've been authorized to carry out. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was often, you know, Jesus, the very son of God, was often mocked, ridiculed, betrayed by the Pharisees, by even those who followed him for a while until they messed up. And yet it never diminished him. Mm -hmm, yeah. You know, a lot of times, I, I think sometimes, uh, as we say over here, I don't know if you had the saying over there in the Philippines, but uh, we're, we're too thin-skinned, mm -hmm. <laughs> meaning everything hurts us. You know, we're, in, we're insulted and we're offended by every little thing people say about us, and, and that's not kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's not a true kingdom leader. I think uh, I've often said a, a true leader has to develop a tough skin, but a soft heart. <laughs> yes. Because you can't let everything people say diminish you or decrease you. Jesus, I mean, he was hung on the cross mm -hmm. and he still knew who he was. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's not about leadership is not about having adoring followers. Um, in fact, it's about knowing who you are when nobody uh, seems to appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, let me just put this because I think a lot of leaders need to understand some things. They're actually called by God, but they haven't understand the protocol or the process. Mm -hmm. The word of God says we're called. And again, we're not called by title. Mm -hmm. Yes, We're right. called by name. Mm-hmm. We're God called me. By title, but by name. That's it. Uh, if we think God's calling, God never calls me Dr. Rick. Amen. <laughs> he never called me Pastor Rick. He never, yes. he calls me son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He calls me by name, not by a Rick Kimball. He calls me by the name that designs my, that defines my DNA. And it's a relationship though. <laughs> yeah, it's relationship. Mm -hmm. And, and, I may not even know in my mind what my kingdom name is. <laughs> my parents named me Rick mm -hmm. and my family last name was Kendall and is Kendall. Mm -hmm. But that's not the name God calls me by. Mm -hmm. the, name, the name God calls me by is, is who he made me to be. Mm -hmm. So Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Mm -hmm. we know his frequency we know his sound mm -hmm. and it's that sound and that frequency that he speaks within me that goes beyond dr rick or pastor rick or even rick kendall mm -hmm. but it goes into my kingdom name mm -hmm. isn't that yeah. great wow and when we begin <laughs> to say i'm responding now to who god is perfecting me to become mm -hmm. and who he always said i am mm -hmm then the process of a leader should help people come into that same deal, that same process. Mm -hmm. If I'm not helping people to discover who they are, I'm not leading. Mm -hmm. I'm just in the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're called by name, not by title. Oh. And then God said, I've chosen you. Mm -hmm. But not because we're all that because we're so great, but because he chose us by purpose. Mm -hmm. So life is a 
is a process of discovering our purpose. And our purpose is not what we do, it's who we are and why we are. Yes. That produces what we do. <laughs> so he said, many are called, but few are chosen. chosen. And the reason why is because sometimes those that are called didn't respond. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if somebody called you when you were, not you, but I mean, if somebody calls somebody stupid or they call them an idiot all their life or they have to lay aside those names mm -hmm. at some point to hear who God says they are. Mm -hmm. Because you can only be recognize your chosen place if you accept the call. Mm -hmm. So I remember, I'll say this to you. I, I hope we've got enough time. I've got a lot going on here. I'm just, <laughs> this is coming to me. But I remember when I was going through a very tough, tough time in ministry, and maybe this will help somebody. Very tough time. I was even beginning to question my calling because everything was just going haywire, mm -hmm. crazy. Uh, and I said, God, I thought you called me to the ministry. Mm -hmm. And I was really crying out to God. And finally, he got through my thick head. He, he, <laughs> and he said, I did not call you to ministry. <laughs> Well, that makes, that's probably why nothing's going right. I thought you called me to ministry. He says, no, I called you, but not to ministry. Mm -hmm. I called you to me. Mm -hmm. And the result is ministry. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because the apostle Paul said, I've been called to be. So, so are you saying his purpose is our ministry? Exactly it. In other words, people really will begin to follow a true leader when they see who the true leader is in God. Mm -hmm. Not because he can perform great gifts. Mm -hmm. That's right. There are a lot of people that have a lot of talented gifts who don't even know God. Mm -hmm. And so it's more important that we begin to say, I've been called to be. So then that changed my whole outlook and began to introduce me to kingdoms many, many years ago because mm -hmm. I said, Wait, I thought ministry was my calling. So when my ministry didn't appear to be going well, I felt worthless. But God said, I didn't call you to ministry. Ministry is the result of the call. Mm -hmm. But I called you to me. Mm -hmm. And as you discover who I am in you, the outflow will be ministry. Mm -hmm. That's right. Wow. <laughs> so that's our calling. The Apostle Paul said, I've been called to be and the result is an apostle. Very important. So your name is how God calls you, not by your title. Mm -hmm. My title, honestly, uh, Coach Ariel, has <laughs> changed a lot. Uh, I mean, I thought I was going to be pastoring all my life. Mm -hmm. I thought, but then the grace moved mm -hmm. for that assignment. Mm -hmm. Now, there's still a pastor's heart in here mm -hmm. because he doesn't repent of his callings, but he moved me more into an apostolic mm -hmm. uh, dimension mm -hmm. to where he simply said, go by the word doctor. I've got a college certificate because that will relate to more spheres of influence, mm -hmm. not because the title makes me who I am. Yes, that's right. Does that make sense? Yes. Because, you know, in, in this world, we are being uh, judged by people according to the title, but in the kingdom of God, it's your yes. own relationship. Yes, and what we're talking about here is kingdom perspective. Mm -hmm. it, it really changes the dimension and the paradigm mm -hmm. of how we have approached leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, because, again, we're here to serve, not to be served. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think sometimes when I have seen, and again, there's no problem with um, people who want to assist a leader. I believe we should honor our leaders. I believe we should give double honor to those that are yes. serving well. So I, I believe in honoring leadership, but not to the point to where we, we're, we're in servanthood of bondage to saying, I've got to just be there for the leader's needs only. Mm -hmm. The leader is there. To help equip you. Mm -hmm. So 
there are three things that I guess I could share with you that might kind of wrap this up. Are we good on time? <laughs> yes. You, you, I feel like can, I've just... You can go ahead, Doc. <laughs> I, I feel like uh, this has just kind of been pouring out of me today. I pray it's a blessing to somebody. Amen. Uh, because, you know, I'm, I'm in the midst of change. Aren't you? Even. <laughs> I mean, I'm constantly developing. I'm, I have not arrived. I, you know, we're on the journey together. Yeah, and yeah. so I told God just recently, I said, Lord, I feel like I'm having to relearn <laughs> how to communicate. Yes. Uh, because the cliches and the slogans and all of that don't fit mm -hmm. where I'm at these days. I, I yeah. really want to be an agent of change. I really want to equip people to know who they are to go out and change the world like you said especially in these times yes so there are three things that every leader has to understand okay it's all right it's okay not puppy <laughs> okay integrity character and honoring mm -hmm. we have to honor our uh being leaders okay buddy okay i'm <laughs> sorry okay we have to not only honor our leaders, but we have, as leaders, need to honor those we're leading. Mm -hmm. So a leader has to have integrity, strength, character of personality, and honor mm -hmm. operating in their life. Mm -hmm. And here's the word in Philippians that gives a great big warning to those who think that leadership is all about towering over people that's not kingdom perspective mm -hmm. philippians chapter 3 verses 18 and 19 says for many walk of whom i have told you often and now i tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of christ whose end is destruction mm -hmm. whose god is their belly and whose glory is in their shame mm -hmm. who mind earthly things mm -hmm. He said, those are the ones you do not want to follow. Mm -hmm. And he said it with weeping, the Apostle Paul, because the church in uh, Philippi was following people who thought they were important. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you must follow me because I'm eloquent and I'm charismatic or whatever. So we, he said, I need to warn you about that because they are filling their own belly. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are doing something for their career. Mm -hmm. And we're not about our career. Yes. Uh, the only career we have is apostolic in the sense that we go, uh, if God has called us to that dimension, and set order. Mm -hmm. But it's not about a career in the mindset of the westernized world. So mm -hmm. finally, I'll share this, and I think I will have said all I'm supposed to say today. Oh. Ambassadors, and we're talking about leaders today. Know the voice of the king. Mm -hmm. Now, you might, a person might say, well, of course they have to. No, no. Not only do they know, know the voice of the shepherd, not only do they know the voice of the savior, mm -hmm. but they have to know the voice of the king. Yes. Because if you don't understand how the king speaks, and you always just look to God as your shepherd or saving you out of trouble mm -hmm. or trying to help you make it through another week. Mm -hmm. You will never understand kingdom leadership Yes, because we have to know now as we grow into the image of God, into perfecting into him. We need to know the voice of him as king mm -hmm. yes. and Lord, meaning now I don't. I don't have discussions with God like this. I don't say, so God, that's what you're saying? Well, <laughs> I don't know if, if I can do it. I mean, I, I really feel so inadequate. I don't know. When we listen to God as King and Lord, we say, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. If that's what you say, that's who I am. This is what I can do. Mm -hmm. So our leadership is not about producing clones, as we said before, mm -hmm. or puppets. <laughs> that perform what we want but revealing who they are in god's purpose yes because 
as I said at the beginning, Mark chapter 10 and verse 45 says, for even the son of man did not come to be served, mm -hmm. but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Mm -hmm. So leadership, as I think you brought up a few minutes ago, has to be what I call organic. Mm -hmm. In other words, relational. Mm -hmm. Leadership is not first about organization. It's about being organic. I can't walk up to you and say, oh, hello there. I want to be your spiritual father <laughs> because I have a position and a title. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work. I have found that I have never walked up to anybody and said, I think I should be your spiritual father because spiritual fathers don't do that. Mentors don't do that. Mm -hmm. True leaders, especially in the area of mentoring, their sons and their daughters tell them, I believe you're my spiritual father. You're my mentor. I really feel like you've birthed something in me, mm -hmm. like Paul said to Timothy. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that you can help me find out more who I am in the king. Mm -hmm. So God then begins to do the dynamic that we can't really cover a lot today, but I'll, I'll finish with this is we begin to notice that. We don't just have people following that are all disconnected mm -hmm. and they're all just looking at us. Mm -hmm. But what's exciting, Coach Ariel, and I really believe you're doing this with this Kingdom Talk program, you have leaders from various different areas who are speaking with the same voice. Mm -hmm. They have different aspects and different uh, avenues of bringing it to that one thing, but it's all about truly understanding the kingdom. So what happens is a true leader will begin networking mm -hmm. and a true leader will find out, wait, these aren't just a bunch of disconnected followers. They're all relating to one another mm -hmm. and That's becoming right. an, an embodiment of our king. Mm -hmm. And then we begin to take the world uh, through colonization and cultivation Mm -hmm. of the message so honestly i think what's really amazing and i'm kind of tearing up a little bit is that dr monroe used to say it's not really important if you remember my name mm -hmm. but it's important if you remember who you are in him yes and to me that is kingdom leadership Amen. you know i think it's it's got to be relational not religious, mm -hmm. because religion will be a lot of regulations. There'll be a lot of programs. It'll be a lot of, uh, you know, you got to follow me because I'm in this position or I have this title. Those things are, 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 you know, parts of, or they're a lesser part of the true fact that it's all about relationship. It's all about understanding that I'm on orders from the king. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He gets the glory. He gets the praise. He gets the yeah. honor. And if I'm, if I'm going to receive any recognition, I will send it on up to the king. Yeah. Because, you know, my heart and my life and my desire is to serve my gift that he's given me. It's not mine. It's his. But I mean, to serve it to you to help you be greater than me. And yeah. so that's the kingdom. Amen. <laughs> that's kingdom leadership. Thank you yeah. very much, Doc, for your life. Thank you for accepting our invitation to have you in this program. Honor. Just like what you have said, to the king. <laughs> to the king. Yes, always to the king. And until next time, Doc, bye for now. Bye-bye.